the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He who dwells in the shoulder of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. But they will not come near you. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. You must abide with my refuge. For he will command his angels concerning you. On their hands they will bear you up. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, by your Son, our Savior, you have always given to your church on earth faithful pastors to guide your holy flock. Therefore, we pray, make all pastors diligent to preach your word with power and rightly to administer your means of grace. Also, grant your people the wisdom to follow in the ways that lead to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Be seated for the hymn. Our Old Testament reading. Turn on here. 
our Old Testament reading for this evening, this afternoon. For you, Pastor Smith, Isaiah 49, verses 5 and 6. And now the Lord says, He who formed me in the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and gather Israel to himself. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servant. Restore the tribe of Jacob, and bring back those of the Israel I have kept. I will also make you light for the Gentiles, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Afternoon's epistle is 2 Timothy 4, beginning with verse 1, where St. Paul writes, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who judges, who will judge living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to miss. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please rise reading in the Holy Gospel. And the Holy Gospel, according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can they be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on, they put it on a stand. It gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Let me see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated for him. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, we do thank you for your living word, a living word that refreshes our hearts and nourishes our souls and give us, gives us eternal hope. 
We thank you for the testimony of Jesus you bring to each one of us. And we celebrate today that you send workers into the harvest and that you have placed Pastor Smith in this congregation so that together they may shine your light and share your love. Bless us now as we hear you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's such a joy to be with you today, dear friends at Peace Lutheran Church. What a pleasure it is to come together with you to celebrate God's blessing to you as a congregation. And I'm just overjoyed as we see God's true faithfulness. Isn't He faithful? You know, walks with you through all things, lifts you up, blesses you, and sends you a new shepherd. That's just a great blessing. And of course, uh, Pastor Smith, what a joy to be here with you and your family, Cindy and Emisa, and of course, your extended family. Just, uh, God is so good, and uh, He blesses us. And I'm excited about the future for your ministry and for this congregation. And to all of us today, Jesus has some pointed words, very brief, clear words from Matthew chapter 5 in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Now, by, by saying that, Jesus makes one thing very clear, that the world needs light, that the world is a dark place. And he's not trying to be a downer or pessimist. Jesus is just speaking the truth, as God so faithfully does to us through his Son and in his Word. He tells us the truth. Uh, you know, this faith God has given us is not somehow an anesthetic so we feel better as we go through life. It's not, as Karl Marx tried to assert, an opiate of the people. This is the word of truth, and God tells it to us straight. And Jesus speaks the truth in love and lets you and me know the reality of our situation in life. You're the light of the world, he's saying, this world's a dark place and needs some light. And you see that. You see that all around you. Look at our world and see it torn in war. Ravaged by illness, disease, and death. So much senseless, terrible violence that just breaks our hearts. There's people running in many different directions in the midst of moral decay. We hear and see division all around us, aired 24 hours a day on news channels and in social media. All around us, you and I see the darkness, and you hear the negative narrative of hopelessness all the time. This world needs light. This world is a dark place. But it's not just out there. It's in your own hearts, too. You go through life and experience the anxiety, the challenges, the challenges of parenting, of family life, the challenges of this economy and finance, the challenges of the illnesses you experience and endure, the worries, the stress, the anxiety, the treatment of you or loved ones, the grief you carry in your heart as you, grieve, as you mourn the death of those whom you love, the worries you have about sending your kids into this world and wondering how they're going to make it through. You experience it. You see it in your own hearts. You feel the darkness in your heart. And sometimes even more... You don't just see it in the world or observe it in your own life or experience it as struggles and difficulties, but sometimes even in your own sin and fallenness, you make the world a little darker, don't you? Whether it's losing your temper or straying off God's path or getting engaged in some destructive addictions or practices, the own struggle, your own shortcomings, your own sins add to the darkness of the world. When Jesus talked about being the light of the world, he made sure we all knew that each one of us in our world desperately needs light, needs his light. So Jesus said to listeners, you are the light of the world. Well, how in the world can that be? I don't think you're perfect yet, Pastor Smith, and I, I think the congregation knows that when they called you, and so, you know, you're not going to bring perfection to this congregation. I think all of us here, there's not a perfect one among us, and not one of us is the perfection this world needs at all. So how can you be the light of the world? 
Well, there's a great answer to that. Uh, maybe you heard this uh, last week, Vin Scully passed away. Vin Scully, the iconic announcer for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Even if you're not a Dodgers fan or a baseball fan, you probably heard recordings of him. Uh, over, he, he was 94 years old when he passed away, announced for the Dodgers baseball team. He was the commentator for the Dodgers for 67 years. He's called some of the most amazing games, most remarkable plays. Uh, he has seen all kinds of heroics on the baseball field. But one thing is very interesting about Vin Scully. He's famous, he's well known, but he never ever hit a home run. Never pitched a no-hitter. Never won a championship. Never did any of the heroics on the field. What Vin Scully did was he told the story. He told the story. He told the story and engaged people and the heroics going on on a baseball field. You and I are not the savior of the world. You and I cannot change people's hearts we cannot save people for eternity. But there is a hero on the field who has done that. And it's Jesus Christ, God's only Son, sent to us. Jesus is the one who hit the home run. Who went to the cross, shouldered our sins, shouldered our burdens, carried the impossible, that, that which would crush us and kill us. He brought it to the cross and then God won the championship by raising Him from the dead. Jesus Christ is the one who did the work, who did the work of salvation for you and me, who accomplished the great blessing of the forgiveness of sins and the blessing of life everlasting with Him because God loved us so much. He's the one who did that. He's the one who sent His Holy Spirit to comfort us, to teach us, to be with us. Uh, you heard about it in the wonderful anthem from the choir. He's the one who animated the church and gave life to the church. He's the one who gave us the gifts of baptism. He's the one in baptism who by the Holy Spirit calls you by name, makes you His own. We're buried by baptism into Christ's death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too walk in the newness of life. He gives you new life. He's the one who gave us the Lord's Supper so that Jesus actually makes His home in us through this beautiful sacrament. So it's no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. In Him, we're new creations. The old is gone. The new has come. Because of Him, we have hope that lasts forever. He's the shining light in our lives. And we get to tell the story. We get to be the light of the world. Bearing His gifts and sharing His good news. That's your call here, Pastor. Your call here is to join with God's people. To shine the light of Jesus Christ. To share His gifts. To live out the beautiful fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And to show the world that there is a different narrative. That there's something new on the scene. That darkness is not what prevails. The negativity and hopelessness of the world's narrative is not what we echo and emulate. No, instead, there's a higher calling. There's a greater story. It's the beautiful story of salvation in Jesus Christ. The hope He gives to all of us. The hope He gives to you as a church, to you as a pastor. You know, this has not been an easy transition for you or even one you wanted. My good friend, Pastor I. Nearson, also sees, and you see with him, and his dear wife Linda sees, the darkness of this world that ravages us, whether it be illness or worry or so many other things. And if we're to face that on our own, how could we even stand? If you as a congregation could weather that, it's just impossible in our own weakness. We can't do this by our might or power but only by the Spirit of God. So even in a situation where your beloved pastor is walking through a time of illness and has to step down into disability because of the ravages of this illness, we still hear Jesus saying, guess what, in the middle of that, you're the light of the world. 
Because nothing will separate from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Nothing will be able to snuff out that light. No bushel is going to cover that lamp. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. And what this pastor proclaimed and put into your lives through word and sacrament is what this pastor now takes up to proclaim and put into your lives through word and sacrament so that this congregation will continue to shine the light of Jesus in the power of the gospel by the grace of God through His Holy Spirit. You are the light of the world. That is the identity Jesus has given you by grace through faith. And so your calling is to let it shine. Let it shine. Let the world see. This is a very different story. Let the world see. Let it shine. Let it shine, Pastor. Let it shine in your love to God's precious people here. Let it shine in your patience and your goodness as a shepherd, your attentiveness to God's people. Let it shine as you come together as a congregation, as you've done so well. You're a wonderful congregation. To share love with one another, to share love with your shepherds, to share love with their families. And to show the world that there is something beautiful here by God's grace through our Savior Jesus Christ. Let it shine. Let your light shine. You know, the first sermon ever preached in the Texas district of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, was preached by none other than Reverend Dr. Franz Pieper. He was president of the Missouri Synod at the time. And for those of you who aren't pastors here, you know, the pastors have his volumes of Christian dogmatics on their shelves. Hopefully, the pages are, are worn and tattered from reading it carefully. It's good stuff. But he wrote, I mean, he was the theologian for our church. He's the one who brought Walther's German Christian doctrine teaching into the English language. So Franz Pieper, in 1906, on Valentine's Day, preached the very first sermon in the Texas district of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Maybe, you know, uh, two dozen congregations at that time. Now, over 400. And what was his text? It was this text from Matthew chapter 5. The title of his sermon. So, the, one of the greatest theologians, one of the most learned men, uh, one of the premier pastors and founders of our church body, took all of that knowledge, all that theology, and his sermon title was that the gospel will not be placed under a bushel. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, is what the first sermon was. Great wisdom in those who came before us. The same is true of the Lutheran confessions. In the preface to the book of Concord, our confessors, the, uh, the reformers, said when it was being published in 1580, when they said, finally, we want this released to the whole world, all this teaching, all this doctrine, the reason we want it released is so that the gospel will not be placed under the proverbial bushel. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You are the light of the world. Take that to heart, dear friends. The world needs you. The world needs us like brothers in ministry. The world needs you. It's very easy for us to become tired, disheartened, anxious, and think that this tidal wave of negativity and darkness is going to overcome us. But Jesus made very clear that even the gates of hell cannot prevail against the advance of the kingdom. The world needs you. People need you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ at peace, this community needs you. Friends here today, your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your parents, your grandparents, they need you. They need you to shine the light of Jesus, to be the light of the world in the way you show love to them, in the way you offer prayers for and with them, in the way you bring Jesus into the picture. You are the light of the world. The only hope of the world is the light of Jesus shining through you. I pray that as you walk together in ministry, you take up that wonderful gift and shine brightly for each other and for all to see. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh, gracious Savior Jesus, you are the light of the world. You shine into our lives and make us reflections of you. Grant us your grace and strength and yes, even joy to shine your great light, your gifts 
to a world in need, that we may know you and ultimately, in eternity, celebrate with you and one another. In Jesus' name. Lady Holy Ministry, please rise. O God the Father, O God the Son, O God the Holy Spirit, Hear the prayers that we offer now, O oh Lord God. You are teaches us responsibility for ministry, which belongs to all Christians. We are chosen people, royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that we may declare the praises of Him from all outside darkness into His wonderful light. O Lord God, you have commissioned us to a high calling. To aid your people in this formidable task, you have through the ages raised up leaders. And now, you have sent Pastor Garrett Smith to be a spiritual leader of your people here at Peace Lutheran Church. Give to him, we pray, this same spirit who strengthened and guided your prophets and apostles. And at the same time, Lord, give him a servant's heart like that of Jesus. Give to your people an attitude of willingness and cooperation. Grant an abundance of love, acceptance, understanding, and above all, forgiveness. We give you thanks, Almighty Lord, for the fruits of the ministry of this church, the pastor you have placed here, and your faithful flock that you alone have gathered, have gathered in this place. Amen. May be seated now as Pastor Smith comes forward for the rite of installation. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the church's usual order and by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you have called Pastor Garrett Smith to serve as pastor here at Peace Lutheran Church in Hewitt, Texas. Hear what the Holy Scriptures say concerning the office of the holy ministry. First, the institution of the office of the holy ministry. From Matthew chapter 28, Jesus came and spoke to his disciples and said, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the very end of the age. We also hear the whole, what the Holy Scriptures say concerning the responsibilities of the office of the Holy Ministry. From John chapter 21, when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. We also hear what the Holy Scriptures say concerning the strength and promise God gives to those 
in the office of the holy ministry. This is from 2 Timothy chapter 3. Continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Pastor Smith, may the Lord grant that you receive and keep these words, the word of God, in your heart so that you may be strengthened and encouraged in your labors as his servant, as a pastor. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask about your commitment to the word of God. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired Word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? If so, answer, I do. I do. And do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds as faithful testimonies to the truth of the Holy Scriptures? And do you reject all the errors which they condemn? If so, answer, I do. I do. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? Do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? If so, answer, I do. I do. And Pastor, do you promise that you will perform the duties of your office in accordance with these confessions and that all your preaching and teaching and administration of the sacraments will be in conformity with Holy Scripture and with these confessions? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Will you faithfully instruct both young and old in the chief articles of Christian doctrine? Will you forgive the sins of those who repent? And will you promise never to divulge the sins confessed to you? Will you minister faithfully to the sick and dying? And will you demonstrate to the church a constant and ready ministry centered in the gospel? Will you admonish and encourage God's people to to a lively confidence in Christ and in holy living? And will you do the work of an evangelist, sharing the mandate to make disciples and exhorting God's people to declare the wonderful deeds of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light? If so, answer yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. And finally, will you honor and adorn the office of the holy ministry with a holy life. Will you be diligent in the study of Holy Scripture and the confessions? And will you be constant in prayer for those under your pastoral care? If so, answer, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. Having heard the pledge and the promise of Pastor Garrett Smith, I now ask you, Peace Lutheran Church, about your commitment to walk with him as your pastor. He has been called here to Peace Lutheran Church in Hewitt, Texas. Will you receive him, show him that love, honor, and obedience in the Lord that you owe to the shepherd and teacher placed over you by your Lord Jesus Christ? And will you support him and his family by your gifts and fervent prayers? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. Will you also honor and uphold your pastor as he serves Christ in all his God-pleasing responsibilities? Will you aid him as he cares for his family? Will you be diligent to put the best construction on everything, recognizing that love covers a multitude of sins? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. God. May God strengthen you and grant you his grace as you walk in these worthy pledges and promises. 
Pastor Garrett Smith, are you willing and ready to assume this public trust and responsibility? If so, answer, I am. I am. Pastor Garrett Smith, I install you as pastor of Peace Lutheran Church in Hewitt, Texas, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray, O eternal merciful God, you've spoken through your own dear Son, saying that the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few, and that we would ask you, the Lord of the harvest, to send laborers into your harvest. Hear now our prayer on behalf of Pastor Smith, who this day is installed as pastor here at Peace Lutheran Church. Strengthen him mightily to take up the word of truth and faithfully to administer your holy sacraments. O Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest, you gave your own life to be a holy and perfect sacrifice for us and for our salvation. Grant Pastor Smith a heart zealous for your people and boldness to guide, comfort, admonish, and serve your congregation with gentleness and wisdom. Fill him, your under-shepherd, with your love, that in your name he will seek the strain and bear up the weak. Give him the heart never to grow weary in the service of your flock. And, O Holy Spirit, strengthen and keep Pastor Smith in the word of truth and life, and support him in every time of trouble and distress. Make his labors fruitful, and when the day of labor is ended, grant him to come with rejoicing before your presence, to receive with all the saints his portion in eternal salvation. Amen. At this time, we're going to step down onto the floor and I'm ask the brothers who are here to come alongside Pastor Smith uh, with a blessing. You could face the congregation if you want as they come before you. It's a tradition of the church to have brothers in ministry witness and advocate for and support a new pastor as he is ordained or installed and to give a word of blessing from the scriptures and a greeting to show our oneness in Christ and that we are truly not alone as we walk together in the Holy Christian Church. Pastor Smith. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Mm. Amen. 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 Pastor, Garrett's brother, I'm glad you're here. Very glad you're here. The prophet Jeremiah, who recalled him and said, Before I formed you when I knew you, I called you to be an evangelist, a prophet of the nations. You are that prophet of the good people here at Peace, you and Empelon, and beyond. Brother Smith, know that I bring you greetings from Legacy Deo, and that I love you very much. I bring you God's word from Ephesians chapter 2. We are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus as our chief cornerstone. And so if you move forward in a new home, a new community, a new friends, a new church, a new ministry, it will go well with you. If you keep and build everything upon Christ Jesus, the one who is true and firm and unwavering, your chief cornerstone. Pastor Garrett, in the Old Testament, we read of David, the son of Jesse, the shepherd who was later king of Israel, right in Psalm 31. I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Let your face shine on your servant. And that is our prayer for you today, that the Lord would shine on you, his called servant, as you minister the gospel in this place in all of the times that the Lord will grant to you. God's blessings. Pastor Garrett, welcome. So, as you are the light in this area and you lead these people in proclaiming and bringing the light to this darkness, the darkness will seem like it prevails. But remember this from Joshua 1 9 be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
Garrett, my brother in Christ. It's good to see you. Good for you to be here. And um, I know pastors only work one day a week, so you take the rest of the time. <laughs> but in all truth, you will be busy every day of the week, 24-7 as needed. But hang on to that, that joyous celebration on Sunday mornings. Uh, back in Exodus, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And may it be a joy for you to proclaim the gospel, and may it be a joy for the people to hear you. May God bless you and keep you here for a long time, and uh, that God may use you to bring great joy and peace to this congregation. And what I'd like to leave with you is um, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news of Jesus Christ. May that be your, your theme throughout your ministry here. We're not quite sure what order we're in here, are we? No. But uh, you're the new pastor, and sometimes we call you the preacher, right? And with that idea in mind that preaching is the most important thing you do in so many ways for so many of our people, I commend to you the words that the Lord spoke to Moses at the burning bush. Now go, I will help you speak, and I will teach you what to say. Exodus chapter 4, verse 12. God bless you. Pastor Smith, I bring you greetings from the folks at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Belmead. Uh, it's a pleasure to be joining the circuit with you as uh, also newly arrived, but I bring you these words from St. Paul. He writes in Galatians chapter 6, let us not grow weary in doing good. I know that uh, Pastor Knobloch over there thinks we only work one hour a week, but that's much like uh, Olympic sprinters sprint four seconds every four years. So uh, do not grow weary in doing good, for we will reap a harvest if we do not give up from Galatians chapter 6. Welcome to the circuit. Thank you. Pastor Garrett, as I came into circuit 23 now almost three years ago as a student and learning to serve the Lord, you greeted me with a wide smile, a firm A&M handshake, <laughs> and an open heart. And I thank you for that. I bring you greetings from the saints at Zion Lutheran Church in Schulenburg, Texas. Our prayer will constantly be that God would protect you and Cindy and Emmy from all harm, that he would guard you in the faith as you lead the people here, and that he would constantly bless you as he has blessed us in every way as you come to him in his word, to the foot of his cross. Amen. Pastor Garrett Smith, greetings from St. Mark Lutheran here in Waco. We welcome you into the ministry here in the Waco area. Uh, reading from 1 Corinthians 1. Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block for Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. God bless you and your ministry here. Pastor Smith, um, greetings and blessings from Christ Lutheran Church in Hillsboro. A reading from Isaiah chapter 55. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. And yes, we continue to pray for that rain. But even more important is what it, ne it says next. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the, pur the purpose for which I sent it. So as you, as you preach, teach, and live God's word among, in this place and in this community, uh, the Lord will... will do his work in and through in and through the hearts and the lives of God's people. Welcome. Short and sweet. In the 89th Psalm, a mascal of Ethan the Israelite. You ever hear of him? Obscurity, I love it. I will sing of the Lord's great love forever. 
With my mouth, I will make your faithfulness known through all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm forever, that you established yourself, your faithfulness in heaven itself. May these be the watchwords of your ministry here at, at Peace Lutheran Church. Thank you. Brothers, you may have a seat. I'm going to come on down here, and I'll ask Cindy to come on forward. I don't know about you, but this is really a special day. It's one to savor, isn't it? One to really remember, one to see what God does. Um, it's really an answer to Jesus' prayer. We have such a wonderful gift that he's given us. And here we see what oneness in Christ looks like. And though there are a lot of things that may be able to divide us, busyness or a lot of differences we have, but God has given us such a precious gift to be able to gather together as brothers and sisters like this. And uh, it strikes me that this day, today, is a little taste of heaven, isn't it? Where we see God gather us together for the purposes of his kingdom, allowing us to use his gifts and walk together. It's beautiful. So beautiful. So I want to pray for both of you and just uh, ask God's blessing upon you. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the miraculous nature of this day where you come down among us through your living word to accomplish something we could never do by ourselves. Oh, it is by grace we are saved through faith. And it is by grace we live as your servants and we exist as the church. It is by grace that we can confess together the word of God and join together in fellowship that's only possible by the work of your Holy Spirit. We thank you. Thank you for this special time. We pray that you bless Pastor Garrett and Cindy and their family as they begin their ministry here. May it bear much fruit, may it be blessed by you, and may the love which they've received from you be brought in wonderful ways to the dear people of this congregation. As, and as this congregation has been loved by you, may they also love uh, this pastor and his family. We rejoice in your good gifts. We trust you. And we celebrate your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Should we welcome your new pastor and his family? I would invite you to stand for the prayers of the church, the Lord's Prayer, the benediction, and our closing hymn. Let us join together in the prayers of this church and the Lord's flock scattered throughout the world. Heavenly Father, we ask you to continue to bless the teaching and preaching of your holy word here at Peace Hewitt. We thank you for the work that has previously been done, and we ask that the message of salvation and eternal life in Christ's death and resurrection would continually be shared with this community and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we pray for those of your churches without pastors. We ask that you would send men to fill uh, the, the role of under-shepherd and lead them in your ways so that they may always hear of the grace, mercy, and peace that only you offer us in your son's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we continually ask that you would bless us with rain. We know that all good gifts come from you and that you work all things for good for those who love you. Knowing this, we boldly pray that you would send rain to bless the land you have given to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we also uh, want to thank you for all the people who were able to, to travel here. And we ask that you would continually protect them as they return home today to go back to the callings and vocations that you have for them. Bless them as they travel near and far so that the promises we have received in Christ's death and resurrection may be shown to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, remember us and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to please be seated for just a moment. Uh, now, I've been a pastor for a while, meaning I know who not to make mad, and the people you never make mad are those who provide the food. So I have some very specific instructions. Uh, if you head directly out the back of the sanctuary, back there is the parish hall for those of you who 
aren't familiar with our building here. And they're asking that we go ahead and line up just at those double doors to go ahead and get food. So there were the very specific instructions. Hopefully we can all follow them. And before we leave, we're going to go ahead and join together in the common table prayer so that you don't have to wait for us slow pastors to take pictures. So <laughs> you'd all join me in the common table prayer. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let thy gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.